Good day everyone, greetings for peace and solidarity. Today we present to you an incredible team sport called dodgeball. This video lecture is presented to you by Shaika Shaila Aklaini Bakalad, Ajumar Manabad, Yanusha Felisika, Ekushane Dar, and Samantha Elizabeth Milo, second year students from BA in English Language Studies. So sit back and relax and allow us to take a short moment from your time. Enjoy! Hello everyone, my name is Shaika Shaila Aklaini Bakalad and I will be presenting the history of dodgeball. As some of you might know, I grew up in Africa and dodgeball is a fond memory for me to look back on. Once upon a time, originating in what most paleoanthropologists consider the oldest inhabited territory on the planet Earth, Africa, is home to one of the most ferocious and deadly sports to have ever existed for over 200 years. The total opposite of the fun, jocular game that it is today was in fact played with large rocks or putrefied matter instead of using soft rubber balls. It was used as an intense workout for the tribes where each competitor would attempt to hit their opponent with the rock to injure or incapacitate them. Once a player was hit, they would attempt to be pelted by further rocks to finish them off. It would be the responsibility of the teammates of the fallen competitor to try and defend him and force the attackers off with their own rocks. It was thus known to be a great way to encourage the tribesmen to work together during skirmishes against other tribes, working to take out the weak and protect their own. Now let us proceed to the next content. Thank you so much, Shaika, for sharing us the history of dodgeball game. By the way, I am Nico Shane Dar, your second reporter. Now we will talk about the general concepts of dodgeball. Dodgeball is a team sport which players of two teams try to throw balls and hit opponents while avoiding being hit themselves. The objective of each team is to eliminate all members of the opposed, opposing team by hitting them with thrown balls, catching the balls thrown by an opponent or inducing an opponent to commit a violation such as stepping outside the court. The sport is played informally in schools and pickup games under varying rules and formally as an international sport under rules that vary among international governing bodies such as World Dodgeball Federation and the World Dodgeball Association. USA Dodgeball is the governing entity for dodgeball in the United States, which members, leagues, and clubs across the nation. So, the National Dodgeball League is a professional dodgeball league in the United States. The league was founded in 2004 and is currently headed by Commissioner Edward Prentice out of Hopkins, Minnesota. The league is composed of 24 professional teams which are divided in the National and American Dodgeball Conferences. So now we will talk about the significant people in dodgeball game. First, we have Dr. James H. Carlisle. He's a missionary working in Africa in the 1800s, learned about dodgeball game and had the opportunity to watch dodgeball games on a regular basis. At first, he was shocked and appalled by the sports, but after careful observation, he marveled the way the game taught player be to be quick, strong, and agile, as well as team building component to it. When Dr. Carlisle returned to England to teach at St. Mary's College in Norfolk, he taught his students to how to play a somewhat safer version of dodgeball without the brutality and death. The dodgeball game that Dr. Carlisle introduced to his student was still different than today's dodgeball game. So, Dr. Carlisle game was played in an outdoor field, not inside a gymnasium, so the players couldn't be trapped and cornered by the gym walls. The second significant person in a game called Dutchball, we have Philip Ferguson. Dutchball continued to be played in an outdoor field with little rules until 1884. That year, students and faculty members visiting St. Mary's College from Yale University watched Dutchball being played. 
One of them was Philip Ferguson, the man credited with bringing dodgeball to the United States. As he watched the St. Mary's College students playing the game, he noted that there were ways to improve upon the sports to make it more fast-paced and more challenging. For starters, he suggested moving the store the sports indoors and confining players to their own territories. Once back in the U.S., Ferguson wrote up official rules for dodgeball in 1905. Thank you so much, Nikki Shane, for bringing us back. Hello, I am Ajimor Manabat, and I will be presenting the court dimensions of dodgeball, as well as its corresponding playing etiquettes. But before we do, I would like to say that I find dodgeball to be a bit challenging because you also use your cognitive abilities to score. But I'd say that it is something that I really want to try playing with others because it is new to me and the thought always excites me. Court Dimensions So the game dodgeball may be played indoors or outdoors. The court is divided into 30 feet by 30 feet areas, with a 4 feet by 30 feet neutral zone located at the center of the court that separates the two sides. An attack line located parallel at 10 feet from the center line for a total court length of 60 feet from end line to end line, and a total width of 30 feet from sideline to sideline. So these are the defined areas. First is the center line represented by the center stripe or mid-court line painted in the court. The back line represented by the end line of the marked basketball court. The back wall or the glass and wall closest to a team's back line. So every effort should be made to obtain the correct dimensions. However, court size may be adjusted to better suit the available space. During the play, all players must maintain within the boundary lines and players may leave the boundary lines only to retrieve the stray balls. The Playing Etiquettes As with many sports or physical activities, ethical precautions should be understood. Like the following. First is to understand, appreciate, and abide by the rules of the game. This is to have a good grasp of the values of the game. Second, to respect the integrity and judgment of game officials. This is to understand that they have a good grasp with their judgment as game officials. Third, respect your opponent and congratulate them in a courteous manner following each match whether in victory or defeat. This is to establish camaraderie and understand that it is all part of the game. Someone wins and someone loses. Fourth, be responsible for your actions and maintain self-control. This is to show integrity and patience that is an important aspect in sports. The last one, do not taunt or bait opponents and refrain from using foul or abusive language. Characters is also a manifestation of professionalism and respect to others. Thank you, Aj, for the wonderful and informative discussion. And hello, everyone. I'm Inusha Faye Alaseka, and I'll be presenting the equipment and facility of Dutch Bowl. First, we have the benches. They are usually standard metal types of benches found at youth sporting events. They are generally large enough to fill all the players on a team, although there is no specific dimension. It is also the location when the player is out. One player may exit the bench and return to play whenever a teammate catches a ball thrown by other team. Second, the cone. They are often used to mark up lines and boundaries of the playing area. They are generally smaller than traffic cones but the size and shape of these cones varies by availability. This is also specially for dodgeball games at outdoor locations since there may not be defined lines and boundaries. Third, we have the court. This is one of the most basic needs of dodgeball game. An official dodgeball court has two halves at 30 by 30 feet each, including a 4 by 30 foot rectangle around the center of the court that serves as the neutral zone. The lines on a dodgeball court are sometimes marked off using tape or cones because pre-existing dodgeball lines are uncommon. And the next, we have the dodgeball balls. They are the most important piece of equipment in any dodgeball game. Dutch balls are thrown and caught to get players out. Mostly, they have similar sizes or smaller, which are 8.5 inches in diameter, and a standard Dutch ball is an inflated rubber ball. This can be purchased as sets or individually at most home or sporting goods stores.
Fifth, we have the knee pads. Though knee pads are not generally a required part of a dodgeball uniform, they can serve an important purpose on the court for the players to prevent damaging their knees. They also vary in size, shape, material, and price. Sixth, we have the floor tape. It is usually kept and applied by a physical education teacher or a game official. It is non-marking and easily removable tape such as masking tape and it can be purchased cheaply at almost any common store. And then we have the sneakers. Having quality dodgeball sneakers is crucial for players and referees. They must be able to grip the floor and move freely. Players often wear non-marking rubber sole shoes. Running shoes, tennis shoes, or basketball shoes are common types of shoes in dodgeball games. Next, the sweat buns. It soaks up sweat from the forehead or wrist to prevent it from getting in players' eyes and hands. Then we also have uniforms. They're used to distinguish teams from one another. Of course, we also have the water bottles. Staying hydrated is important in every sport. Players need to rehydrate themselves after each game. And then the referee shirts. The referee serves a very important role in organized competition for yes complete control over the game. This requires being up close to the action and therefore designating themselves from the players with a unique uniform is a must. They often use standard black and white striped referee shirts. And then lastly, we have the whistles. It is used to signal the start and the end of a dodgeball game. Though this is not really necessary, it can be helpful to have clear method of communication for the referee. Next up is the rules and regulations of dodgeball to be presented by Samantha Elizabeth Milo. Hello, it's Samantha Elizabeth Milo reporting and I will be presenting to you the rules and regulations of dodgeball. Dodgeball is a great team sport. It is a fun and healthy way to strengthen or boost our immunity. Now let's proceed with the rules and regulations of the game. In starting a game, each game begins with all players behind the respective baseline. Both feet must be behind the line. At the referee's whistle, three players may rush the center line for a ball. Note that players may only take one ball at a time. And after each game, teams switch sides. Now a live ball is a ball which has cleared the baseline at the start of the game. A ball that may be caught to return a teammate to the game or a ball that has been thrown without stepping on or over the center line. On the other hand, a dead ball is a ball not cleared behind the baseline at the game's beginning. A ball that ricochets off anything before hitting an opponent after the ball is thrown or on the fly. A ball that has been kicked or a ball that is thrown by a player who steps over the center line. Next, we have the everything bad, nothing good principle. When a player ventures outside the playing area for a ball, they are deemed out of bounds, but are not out. When a player is out of bounds, they can be hit by a thrown ball, which is bad because their own thrown ball from out of bounds may be caught by the opponent to get him or her out, and if the throw does hit a player, it does not count. Conversely, a ball caught out of bounds by a player does not eliminate the opposition, nor does it bring a teammate back into play. Just remember, when you step out of bounds, everything bad can happen to you, but nothing good for your team. Note that players may only hold one ball at a time. However, if you are the last player for your team still in play, you may then have two balls in hand. This call will be announced as one left, two in hand. Next, we have the honor code. If you are hit or if you think you might have been hit, please remove yourself from the game. Each match will have a dodgeball referee to determine rule violations and enforcement and calling players out. However, referees will not be able to see every out, so please be honest if you think you might have been hit. Be fair and be fun. The primary duties of a referee shall be to keep the official game time, rule enforcement or violations, substitution queue, scoring, submission and recording of scores, and handling or mediation of complaints from players. They will not solely be responsible for calling players out, as honesty from players will be also required at times. Now, if a referee believes you have been hit, you are out. No discussions or arguments, please, as this eats up your match time and you get to play less as a result. Think of it as a pass interference call in the NFL. It might be a bad call, but the penalty still stands and is not reviewable. 
teams or individual players may not stall the game by holding onto a ball on their side of the court. A 5 second will be initiated if players hold the ball for too long. If by the end of those 5 seconds the ball hasn't been thrown, the ball will be considered dead. For the elimination, a player may be eliminated in any of the following ways. First, a ball thrown by the opponent hits him or her below the head. Note that if a player is ducking, crouching, or dodging to avoid being hit by a thrown ball, a headshot will count as a legal out. If a player attempts to catch a thrown ball but misses and it hits him or her in the head, the throw will count as a legal out. Second, if a player is simply putting their hands up to cover their face for self-preservation, the player is not out. Third, the third referee has final judgment on the player's intentions. Fourth, a player's thrown ball is caught by an opposing player. Fifth, a player is hit by a thrown ball and that, and that same ball is caught by a teammate. But this player cannot be saved by another teammate catching a ball they were hit with or tried to catch. Sixth, a player may be hit while shagging a ball outside of the playing area based on the everything bad, nothing good principle. Seventh, the ball a player blocks with is dropped when hit by an opponent's thrown ball. Eight, actions are enforced in the order they occur. For example, if a player is hit but touches a ball first, the player is out but redeems a teammate. If a player is hit while their ball is in the air, the player is out but their ball is still alive. And as for the redemption, a player may only be returned or redeemed to the game by a teammate catching an opponent's thrown ball. Legal and illegal catches are outlined in the following. A redemption may occur if a player catches an opponent's thrown ball on the fly and has both feet in bounds after the catch. Take for example, the NFL catching rules. If a player catches a ball and comes down out of bounds, it is a no catch and neither the player is out nor is a player redeemed. A catch will not count if first, the ball is deflected by one player and caught by another. Second, the ball bounces off any artificial surface, for example, floor, basketball hoop, wall, ceiling, etc. Or third, the player has both feet out of bounds initially and catches the ball while jumping back into the play. A ball cannot be caught while holding onto a ball with another arm or hand. A player can drop the ball, then quickly catch it, but must make the choice. Note that in the case of a simultaneous catch with the last two players on the court by opposing teams, both players shall remain in, and each team receives a redemption player. And that's all for the rules and regulations of the Dutch ball. And that's all for today. And if you have any question, just put it down in the comment section and see you on my next video. Bye!